Hello, my name is Roseanne Hodin and I am a new author. I've just written a book called Growing Goats and Girls and it's the story, a memoir of life, uh, the good life on the Cornish farm. has been very very good for me um, normally in April and May and June I would be a sailor sailing out in Greece in sometimes really extreme weather um, and so for the first time for 10 years I have seen I have seen the most beautiful April May and June weather I have I mean it's been so beautiful and I have had the pleasure of cycling along the the Plymouth coast coastal area and tweaking my garden and um, just enjoying the beautiful blue days and birds and flowers. Morwenna leads the goats out of the yard and up into the triangle top orchard. We are a funny little procession. This leader is nine years old and confidently in charge of animal routine. She has Yamaha by the collar and together they are considering small treats for a goat nibble along the way. Snips of young bramble, sorrel in the bank, a leaf or two of primrose. And behind these two are Michael with four junior goats. And straggling behind and chatting to herself follows our dizzy six-year-old. I am bringing up the rear with Juniper and her small kids she needs leading, as she would prefer to be in the shed with her little ones and they are frisking about in a new and astonishing world. They plant their peg legs squarely on the ground to snort with surprise at what they see and seek reassurance with a tinny bleat, which is answered by a snicker of maternal affection. Moena opens the little gate into the top orchard and firmly directs Yamaha towards a tangle of brambles that we want stripped so we can cut the remaining briars. We stand in a pastoral sort of way. The goats are not tethered and need to be kept focused on the bramble zone. And Georgie and Morwenna flutter about finding catkins and pussy willow and a tiny hidden violet. It is a perfect April moment. I'm a lucky girl. I have a study. Um, I also share it with my husband. This is his desk here. So the idea of a peaceful study where one can write uninterrupted for hours is not strictly true. And the red books, and the red books at the bottom, are very precious photo albums. And these photo albums have provided a great deal of inspiration for the book I've just written, Growing Goats and Girls. I write on the computer. I make some notes in this book. Uh, but mostly, you know, I write, I write on our boat. Now I have in here a very special room, which Virginia Woolf would be appalled by because this is a room of my own. This is a room of my own. And yet I don't write here. I do all the other things that women might do. Craft, mending, stitching, all sorts of things like that but mostly I sit and write here at my grandmother's old dressing table. I was devastated when um, I realised that all the excitement that comes with my first book and the, and the publicity that I thought might happen and the festivals and the readings and the parties just crashed. Um, and that's been quite sad. It's only in the last week or so that I've suddenly got very excited about a, a new writing project. My, my life has been very much um, chopped into, into sections and I had a 30-year um, a farming uh, experience and a 10-year sailing on the high seas experience but in the middle of that I had a three-year experience as a volunteer in Africa and I've suddenly got Africa in my blood again and I'm, I'm planning to write about that. To get the vibe for the next work, it's quite easy to come to my room in which I keep all the 
Ephemera from Africa, where we worked as volunteers with BSO. Plenty of adventures. One of the best things about being organic and self-sufficient is bartering and selling things. It is with great pleasure that I take a tray of eggs to the Whole Food Cafe, the Rainbow Cafe. It's run as a cooperative. Hippie characters take turns to cook, wait at table or serve food from the counter or run the creche in the room alongside. What isn't so good is my battle with the bad-tempered traffic warden who seems to wait for me and pounce. We have the same conversation most weeks. Madam, he leans into the driver's window sneeringly. Madam, you may not park here. I reply wearily and patiently that I know it is acceptable to make a delivery, but you are not a trade vehicle, madam, or making a delivery. Yes, I am, I protest. I am carrying a tray of eggs to the Rainbow Cafe and I get out, attached to a child and bear aloft a battered tray of eggs. He looks at me sourly again. Well, on this particular day, my battle is of a different kind. I have only a half tray of eggs, mostly duck eggs in gleaming bluish white. When I hand them over to the cook in charge for the day, I apologize that there are so few hen eggs. And by way of explanation, I say that two of the hens are broody. I am met with a stare. I say cheerily that two of the best layers, the dark marins, have each got a clutch of 15 or so eggs under them, looking smug. I get the blank stare again, and I'm nonplussed. The cook says very slowly and carefully, with an appalled look, You mean the eggs are fertile? Oh, yes, of course, I reply. Oh my goodness. This is a vegetarian restaurant, she says. I will have to tell the committee that your hen eggs are fertile. Yes, and the duck eggs, I throw in. We are having a meeting on Tuesday and we will call you to say if we think we can use fertile eggs. I roll my eyes as I leave with my rejected fertile tray. They want virgin eggs? Hmm, let them have battery. As I turn the corner towards the car, I see the warden. Am I no longer a valid delivery? I feel the need to hide a while at the pet shop window examining little hamster toys until he passes. That's your lot. I married a Cornishman that I met in London and um, Cornwall to me is freedom. It's rolling wastelands and moorland and secret little lush burrows. It's, it's such a beautiful county. And I've, I've spent, as any newcomer, any grockle, I spent a few years kind of adjusting to the, what to me felt like a very slow pace. Um, but my farming community in Liscard was just amazing. They were so kind and lovely to me. And I, I've, I've have felt integrated. We have two little Cornish daughters who, although they live in London, are Cornwall to the very core. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the North Cornwall Book Festival. 